families and friends, welcome back to Mama Niger's Kitchen. A kitchen filled with love and of course joy, creativity, name it. There is always, always, always an amazing extravaganza adventure happening at Mama Niger's Kitchen. So today guys, welcome back to all my existing subscribers and followers and to my new guests coming in for the first time you are welcome with so much love from mama ninja yes you will not be disappointed guys i am engaging today on an adventure i'm going to be creating cutlery board also known as cheese board without further ado I'm going to show you all the ingredients that I will be using. So come with me on this journey. It's going to be exciting, interesting, and above all, it's going to be tasteful, tantalizing, and you will love it. So on my island, I actually went to Aldi. Aldi is a, is a very affordable grocery store. If you have one in your area, please go in and check it out. Aldi always have the most affordable um, either produce or um, crackers, you know, cheese, whatever you need to create um, a fun, interesting meal for yourself and for your family. So here I do have some various type of cheese. I have some cranberry, white cheddar cheese, some asiago cheese, everything goat milk cheese. Mild cheddar cheese in cubes, Kobe Jack cheese, some white cheddar, and I did also pick up already cut up in cracker size cheddar, extra sharp white cheddar cheese. I do also have this in the yellow form cheddar cheese. Let's flip that the right way. Some double ghost cheese, that is cheese with onions and chives. And I also have some Cajun crazy cheese. And brie, which I am going to cut into hard shape and fill it up with some goodies. All right, family, please do understand. I do have guests and family members in the home, and um, as such, there might be noise. So, I have chosen to do a voiceover on this video and also to make sure that the video is not too, it's not excessively long um, and overbearing. So, I will be starting now with cutting the brie. I have two shapes of heart or two heart shapes. One large and a smaller one that I will use to cut the heart shape into my brie. It was a little bit sticky and I realized that um, having the brie in the room temperature um, after I purchased it from the store um, has um, changed, you know, softening the status, you know, the, the state, the solid state of the brie. So I had to put it back into the fridge. I couldn't really fully complete my two heart shape. As you can see, some are breaking apart, but it was also quite easy to remold it into the heart shape. So that is one thing um, that I love about Brie. Um, it's quite malleable and you can easily change the form to how you want it. Now you can see me working on the second heart. So I'm using the smaller size heart cutter, pressing that through the depth of the brie until you can see it on the other side and um, having a full cut on the other side and then you remove it gently. All 
right, I am pleased with how the brie heart shape turns out. My other heart is in the refrigerator. So once it is solidified, I will bring it out and place that on the board as well. I'm going to start working with the cheese. So starting with the sharp cheddar cheese, pre-cut into packer size. So that's going to make it quite easy, guys. If you can get your hands on that, I will say by all means, use it. Okay? <laughs> use it. Don't pride yourself by saying, oh, I have to hand cut everything. If you can find pre-cut, reasonably priced, go for it. So I am going to just go ahead and arrange it in any format or shape. So remember guys, it is a freestyle. Freestyling is the key here. So guys, what I didn't show you is my vegetables, which I have already pre-washed and um, have in the drain to dry. I have here tzatziki, uh, spinach parmesan with Greek yogurt that I'm going to use for my vegetable dips. So I have poured that into a bowl surrounded by my broccoli florets. So what you see me doing now is just arranging some grapes. I'm using two types of grapes, the green and the red grapes. I'm combining both on each side of the board. So what you are doing actually is that you try to replicate uh, what you have on one side of the board with on the other side of the board. Um, that is eye-catching, appealing and intentional decorations. I find the cranberry cheddar cheese you know, quite interesting because of the red speckles uh, of um, color within, embedded within it. So I chose to cut it up in a um, fry shape um, using my spiral knife and it was quite a fun addition to the board. It was easy for the kids to pick up and also for adults to use for their crackers as well. Now I am going to add on some more vegetables. I do have here sweet peppers as well as sweet tomatoes, baby tomatoes. I love those and those are good addition for color, for texture and for something nutritious, you know, and green natural items on your charcuterie board. So um, you can create a charcuterie board that is very healthy nutrient dense and not just empty calories by incorporating vegetables and fruits into your charcuterie board i also picked up the cubed cheddar cheese and kobe jack cheese these cubes i am going to create a structure from it and it was quite fun to create a tower with both sets of cheese on either side of my charcuterie board. It was fun to do. I wanted to pile it up initially, but hey guys, I just intentionally changed my mind and created a structure. My structure was four by three and it actually turned out good to be a very beautiful tower. Yes, standing tall on my charcuterie board. Having it unexpected on your charcuterie board is always a welcome surprise. So here we go, some milk chocolate orange truffles. I am going to add um, at sporadic locations on my charcuterie board and also use it as a bordering factor um, on the board. So on the edging of each corner, you will find the orange truffles. Isn't that cool, guys? Another great pick was this maple leaf cream cookies that I picked up from Aldi. Guys, wow, 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 wow. It just totally embodies everything that you call fall. Yes, having those maple leaf was just the icing on the cake for my board. 
you have not seen anything yet guys this belgium chocolate covered pumpkins or belgium chocolate pumpkins were the most exciting item that i picked up it was just so unreal to have these little miniature pumpkins in chocolate of every flavor it was delight it was a delight to see and it was delicious to buy it into guys oh my i use that to accentuate the chocolate board and you will see how i use it later now it is time to add on the nuts onto the chocolate board so i am starting with the cashew nuts so i'm just gonna pile that up on one end I'm really having fun here guys I hope you are building this charcuterie board with me and having great fun as well but guess what I'm going to show you a technique on how you can create rose flower from your salami so I am using Italian salami and I'm going to create rose flower just watch First, you want to line up your salami overlapping one over the other about halfway. To achieve your desired length, here I am using 12 to 13 salami pieces. Then you will roll all into one structure. Now cut your rolled up structure or cylinder into two equal halves using a knife and use a toothpick to hold each of the pieces together so from one rolled up salami you are going to make two roses i'm going to use a toothpick to hold each of the half cylinder together and fan it out into a rose shape the toothpick was slightly long so i cut it into two third so I'm only using to third of it and if necessary, I will use the other one third on the other side to ensure that the structure is stable. And voila, you got yourself a beautiful salami rose, a beautiful and interesting accentuation to your cheese board. At scattered locations, I'm going to add on some dry nuts, um, almond, walnut, raisins, as well as dry fruits. I do have some dates and apricot that I will be using to garnish my charcuterie board. There is no charcuterie board without dry nuts or dry fruits. I am going to roll up the prosciutto dry curate ham in cylinder uh, form and pile it up on the board. If you have worked with a prosciutto ham, you know how tender they are. They can easily shred apart. So you just have to be extremely careful holding it with the sheets, put it on your board and cut it into equal halves. Turn the cut edge towards you and begin your rolling from that edge so that you have a finished cylinder when you are all done. As you can see guys, my board did fill up very quickly. I still have some other items that I would love to include in my charcuterie board. So I am going to be extending my board using a circular disc board um, in adjunct to my rectangular board on the board i'm going to spread on majority of the items that i have not used on my main board such as the assorted crackers um, the assorted crackers also was picked up from audi everything that i use for my charcuterie board guys came from audi are you tired of surprises yet i don't think so i do have here another great find from audi pumpkin spice yogurt covered pretzels 
I had a taste of these. Look at these beauties. Oh my. The spice, the pumpkin spice, you know, and the flavor was just a spunk that you need. I am going to pile it up on the loop of each of the eggs. I have two loops on my board, which I'm going to anchor with the pretzel. I'm going to cut up additional flavored cheese in different shapes and structure to add on to my circular board. Having a variety of shapes and structures on your board creates a unique character for your charcuterie board. To ground our board, I'm going to add on some chickpea salad and also some pitted olives. The chickpea salad was to die for. It was really, really good. Quite tasty, delicious, and spicy. Now I'm going to fill up the remaining spaces on my board with floured salami and fresh fruits such as red and green grapes. I had to change my crackers formation multiple times until I arrived at the circular bordering style that I was finally pleased with. So guys, the lesson learned here is never be afraid to change it up. Change it up, free form it, until you are satisfied and pleased with what you have. Yes, 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 my charcuterie board is completed. I just need to add on some hot apple cider juice and we will be ready to party. Yes, guys. Oh, this was quite a fulfilling adventure. Oh, yes, indeed. Cider. You know, this is fall, guys. Nothing else goes best with your fall charcuterie board than warm or hot apple cider. Yes, and this apple cider was 100% natural, it was just a perfect, perfect pair. Wits the chocolate board. Guys, this is total grazing. <laughs> A grazing table filled up with all sorts of goodies. And this was definitely a crowd pleaser for my guests. 
everyone will enjoy and have fun with it. Oh yes. I love, I love. It was definitely a winner for all guests that had the opportunity to dine and share this experience. So guys, thank you all for joining me in this adventure creating my first charcuterie board and I can say from this end that it was a winner. I am completely, completely satisfied with it. I am happy with it and I know you can replicate this. As I said, creating your experience and making the best of it.